And welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And I got a, uh, there's a couple things I want to riff about here, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pick up your calls, and we'll just basically do open lines for the next uh, two hours as anything goes Friday. Uh, but there, there are some news stories, and there's also this very interesting email uh, that, that uh, was forwarded to me. Uh, from a young man named Sam. He says, Tom, I'm an 18-year-old starting my first year at a state university. I'm not going to name it as a political science major. He said, you're one of my intellectual heroes, and I aspire to be as active as you. I would be honored if you could give some advice to a young progressive. My biggest concern is what is the best route to go at this stage in my life in order to make the most positive impact in the world? Is politics the most effective way? I know that you have a background in engineering. Would environmentally focused engineering be a better choice? I'm much more capable in social science than physical science, but would it be a better skill to learn? And then, you know, thanks for, for doing everything you do. And he signs it, Sam. Let, here's my uh, advice, as it were. I, I, first of all, I, I generally don't, I try not to give, and this is something I've learned from my wife, try not to give advice when it's not solicited. But when it is solicited, hey, here you go. Uh, and thank you for asking. I believe, and I, I base this belief on my life's experience and, and all these years of observations of both myself and other people, that the critical thing in your effectiveness in life, whether it's in, in your relationships, in your work, in your uh, desire or ability to change the world in any kind of positive way, um, your you know, whatever it may be, the critical thing is passion. Walt Whitman, I believe it was, it might have been George Bernard Shaw, actually, now that I think about it, said, if you love your work, you never work a day in your life. And there's something, you know, I mean, that, that's putting it in a little more selfish frame, but... You know, I've, I've mentioned before, I would do what I do right now for free. And in fact, I have. I did for almost three years. Um, in fact, it cost me money before, you know, we, as we were building the business. And in fact, every business that I've started, the first typically two years, I've, I, you lose money on it. I mean, that's just, it takes two to three years for any business to really get going. And including my writing career. So what I would say to you, Sam, is it's not like there's a right thing or a wrong thing in, an abstract, in the abstract for you to do. The right thing or wrong thing for you to do is the thing that sets you on fire. The thing that you love doing, the thing that you will have fun doing the rest of your life, or at least for the next few years before you decide to reinvent yourself, if you're one of those people like me who every five, six, eight, ten years, whatever, uh, decides to reboot your career and go off in a whole new direction. I think, you know, Louise and I are uh, not so unique because being a serial entrepreneur is a fairly common thing in America among entrepreneurs, but among the general population, it's fairly rare, in that we decided... Uh, after reading John D. McDonald, Travis McGee novels back in the day, we decided that uh, we weren't going to wait until we got old to enjoy our retirement. And so we would build a business, a business where we felt like we were doing some, well, I'll tell you the criteria in just a minute. We would build a business, reach the point where we could sell it for enough money to live for a couple of years on, sell it off, retire for a year or so, travel around the world, do whatever we wanted, write a book, recharge. And then when we got low on money, we'd start another business. And I remember back in the 1970s, in the early 1970s, well, it was the late 1970s, we had just started this Community for Abused Kids in New Hampshire in 1978, uh, hunterschool.org. And... There was a fellow, I think his name was Nathan Gray, who was one of the founders of Oxfam, or at least Oxfam USA, as I recall. And he was fairly well known in the nonprofit community at the time, and I, I have, I've 
not been in touch with him in 30 years, so I'm not sure what he's up to these days or even if he's still around, but he was a bit older than me. And I asked him if he would, you know, have lunch with me or breakfast with me, actually, in Boston. He li- I, I think he lived in Boston. I was up in New Hampshire. And offer me some advice on how to run a nonprofit and what we should do. And he said, sure. And we got together uh, over breakfast, and so I said, what, you know, What's your advice? And he, and he told me how he had started, he had helped start and build a number of nonprofit organizations, and I think maybe even a couple of for-profit organizations. So there was, you know, I've seen a little bit of myself in him or vice versa. And he said, I've always had three criteria by which, you know, the, the filter through which I decide whether to do something, whether to take a job or whether to create a job for myself. Um, three things in ascending order of importance. In other words, from the least important to the most important. Uh, uh, Number three, can I make a living at it? And a reasonable living. Okay, if I can do that. Number two, will it have a net positive effect on the world? Will it change the world for the better? And number one, the most important thing, can I have a hell of a lot of fun doing it? And if I can answer yes to all three of those, then I say yes to that project. And the minute it stops being fun, or the minute it stops changing the world, I'm out of there. And, you know, I went back and, I don't think Louise was with me at that breakfast, I went back and told her about it, and, and she was like, cool, let's, let's, let's borrow that. And that has been our, uh, our filter. So I would say, Sam, to you, it's not whether you should go into environmental engineering or politics or whatever. It's that when you look at the whole broad spectrum of things that are out there that are possible for you, whether it's, you know, in the political arena. Um, I think I missed my foot with a sneeze button. No, I got it. Okay. Pardon me. Sneezing here. Whether it's uh, infiltrating the Democratic Party or running for office, running for political office, or whether it's uh, joining uh, an organization like Progressive Democrats of America or a move to amend.org that actually, I mean, you can literally start a chapter out of your home, or whether it's uh, joining an existing organization like Greenpeace or or, uh, the Natural Resources Defense Fund or something that's already going and they may have a position for you, or whether it's starting your own project, whether it's environmental or political, Imagine yourself, you know, learn as much as you can about each one of these opportunities. And then imagine yourself in that role. Just kind of project yourself into it. Notice what you see and what you hear and what you feel. And then ask yourself the question. If I'm doing this, am I having a hell of a lot of fun? I mean, it presupposes that you can make a living and you can change the world for the better. And when you find the thing that causes you to really, you know, feel your, your heartbeat speeding up a little bit, like, whoa, yeah, then go for it. This is a variation. I've told this story, uh, I think I, I told it just a few weeks ago, but it's worth repeating, about, you know, Richard Bandler, the feedback story, where we went into a restaurant in London. He was writing the uh, foreword for one of my books, the founder of NLP. And the waiter brings a, a menu, and I'm trying to figure out what to eat. And Bandler says, just make a decision, Herman. And I'm like, I don't know. He says, you're looking at that menu. You're, you're making pictures in your mind. You're having a conversation with yourself about things. I said, yeah. He said, I just use biofeedback. I said, what are you talking about? He says, I look at the menu. Whatever makes me salivate, I order. So that's it. I mean, you know, look at the menu. Look at all the things that are possible for you. And whatever makes you salivate, whatever, whatever trips the wire in you that says, wow, would I love to do that? Go for it. We'll be back.